Hey guys, um, welcome to uh, this first tutorial we're going to do. Um, basically I want to show you, this is one of my favourite um, images that, that we've done. Um, and I, I kind of, I think I did this back in, it's probably early 2009, um, not long after I started um, shooting uh, with the camera. Um, so I was so completely inexperienced, didn't have a clue what I was doing. I was pretty new to Photoshop as well, um, and I kind of came across this type of effect purely by accident. And quite often, I think that's that's the best way to do it is if you just play around with different effects and see what looks good and what you like, um, and you know try and then uh, you know learn how to how to approach Photoshop in a way that you have a vision up front and you know how to. How to kind of work your way around Photoshop in order to achieve that that end goal, um, but this gives you an idea of, of how somebody with no experience at all um, can basically layer up all these different um, effects and layers um, to create something which I I still think um, is really really atmospheric and dark and um, it just it transformed this image which you see on screen at the moment into something completely different. Um, I mean, this looks, which it is, is just like a, a normal shot on a, a decent camera. Um, I took this on a, a Nikon D80. Um, as I say, it was maybe it was maybe my third kind of go at, at uh, photography, really. Um, I borrowed the camera off a brother of mine um, and just, just shot, uh, went up to the north coast of, of Ireland and just went around for the day visiting all the different sites around there and, and taking different shots. Um, but I want to give you an idea, I want to show you this. Um, this is the original shot, I'll zoom out slightly um, just to get a bit more perspective here. This is the original shot um, and you'll know if you know much about Photoshop um, that it's, it really all comes down to layers and um, which are all kept over at this side of the screen on the right hand side. Um, but you'll see how I took this original image and basically just created different layers and effects. I'll just go through them one by one. Um, which really built up the entire image to something like this, which is, I mean, this one's very dark. If I were doing this again, I'd probably take off a couple of those layers and maybe, you know, probably leave it, leave it like so. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of take you through the process from its base level, take all these layers off, and I'll show you how I kind of built up all these different layers. I'll probably do it a bit. Um, more succinctly now, um, I'll probably be able to work it out in, in fewer layers. Um, but if you want to, um, you know, if you have an image that, that maybe is laid out like this, you want to create this type of effect, this will be a good example of, of how to go about doing that. Um, another thing to bear in mind is um, we're going to be launching our um, members only area um, on uh, what's good. It's linked to our photography site, zenyphoto.com, um, but we're going to be launching it at um, probably the end of March, um, maybe maybe into April. But what I'm going to be doing as part of the launch is basically giving away this image, uh, giving away the Photoshop document to all members of um, our photography site. Um, I, I would normally charge anywhere from kind of 95 to 300 and something dollars for this image. Um, depending on if it's just a digital download or if it's a framed uh, version of the image, um, so it's a it's it's one of my favourite images. I love I love the shot, um, and it, it sells really well for me. Um, but I I'm going to be giving this basically giving away the Photoshop document. You guys can do with it what you like. Um, you can play around with the layers as you see them here, um, or you can add in different layers and different effects. And once that is launched, by the way. Um, and you get access to the PSD. I'd love to see what you do with with the shot. So um, if you play about with it and you like what you've done, I'd be really really interested to see. So send you know send your images back, um, so we can can see them and uh, and can see what you've done with the shot. But um, if we start from basically start from the start, um, what I liked about this image was it was a pretty kind of thundery day as you can see from the sky behind so it's quite atmospheric in itself but the sun had just come out and it was hitting um, this temple, this is Mussenden Temple in uh, Northern Ireland 
um, it's right perched, this, you can't really see it here, but it's actually perched on top of this cliff. Um, it's quite an iconic um, uh, sort of setting within Northern Ireland. Um, but the sun had just come out and it was you know, just illuminating the, the front of this, uh, the temple, the entrance. Um, the other great thing which I loved was the fact that at the time of year which I was shooting, um, we caught it on the, the kind of corn looking fields, I don't know what they are, wheat, corn, uh, grass basically, um, were, were quite high and it kind of gave it quite an atmospheric um, sort of effect. I always get people commenting on the image and the end result saying it's, it's really like that, uh, you know, that shot out of Gladiator when um, he's walking through the wheat fields and that they're blowing and um, his hand is kind of grazing the, the um, grass. Um, but I always thought that, you know, when I created the image, that's what I thought. And I'm surprised by how many people have also commented on it. Um, so basically it started out as quite an atmospheric image. You can see the sunlight hitting the, the, the front of the uh, temple here. What I loved about it was that the background, you can see the thundery sky in the background. Um, and that created an opportunity to, to kind of really bring out a, a good contrast between the sun and the thunderous background colours. Um, so where I started basically was with this image. Um, at the time I was really getting into the basic uh, effects in Photoshop. So I was heavily relying on things like dodge and burn. Um, you'll know if you go over to this little palette. Um, by the way, my Photoshop uh, page is, is laid out in a certain way. You'll probably have yours laid out in a different way. Um, but if you know the rough sort of tool, um, layouts then you should be able to follow this really really easily um, but first of all what I did was uh, I went to the dodge to, or the, sorry the burn tool selected it um, I think I went to the shadows um, dropped the exposure maybe to 13 so we can be a bit more subtle with it um, and make sure it's, it's one of the soft brushes up here you'll see one of these uh, brushes rather than a hard brush if you do it as a hard brush you'll see that kind of horrible line appearing um, so make sure it's a nice soft brush um, probably bring up the size of it to a fair size maybe about here about 600 for this um, and then what we're going to do is focus really on the background the sky first we're going to copy the base layer like so if you just drag it down to the little copy box here and let go that copies it um, and then we're going to going to focus around the clouds and try and bring out a bit of contrast in the clouds um, because we have the exposure set quite low, 12 there, um, we should be able to get away with a nice subtle um, change in that. But really it's it's kind of a, a, you'll learn to kind of feel where you're going with the, the tool. So as we start here, we'll just kind of click and hold and drag it around the sort of shadowy areas. Keep sort of clicking, play about with it a bit. You see there it's really deepen in the background go up into the corner here to get the contrast. One thing to be careful of here, um, which I didn't know about at the start when I was playing about this image, but if you really go at the, the burn tool um, around an item in the foreground, you'll notice it creates this kind of halo effect. I'll just go at it really quickly here. You see this kind of, uh, this halo sort of effect around the, the, um, the temple there. Um, which isn't that great looking so you want to be just careful and try and temper how much you're using the burn tool and um, you don't want to kind of go overboard with it um, that maybe is even a wee bit overboard and then play about you make the brush smaller and play about with some of those background areas there as well try and bring out these little kind of natural highlights and low, um, shadows within the clouds see here try and make it really thundery here so, okay, uh, then what I did, once you're kind of happy with the, the look of that, um, was try and contrast this, this grass in the foreground. Um, I'll get on to kind of colour changes and things at the minute. That kind of green that you see in the foreground doesn't really do anything for me. Um, but more than anything, I wanted the, the kind of nice yellowy corn grass, whatever it is, to really contrast and, and to be brought out. Um, so what I first of all would have done is get the shadows going within the grass. So use the burn tool again. If you want to copy the layer and just work um, on kind of each tool as you go, you can of course do that. So maybe that's a better thing because then you can mix and match layers a bit um, more easily. Um, but say we copy that again, 
then we start going at the, the grass here um, and try to allow that uh, nice yellow kind of corn uh, to really kind of sit up. Um, what you could do as well, we've got this set, the burn tool set the shadows, um, maybe drop it up to mid tones. The shadows can make everything a bit, uh, a bit too much burned out. Um, and you want to kind of create a nice subtle change in these things. Um, so say once you play about with that, I'll maybe go up to this other kind of central area again, just to contrast the um, the nice yellow uh, tones in the background as well. We want those to you know really stand out as well. Um, and then maybe some of the the sea as well to kind of create a bit of a sunlight effect on the sea. Um, once you're happy with that, um, if you Basically, you can um, use the little eye tool here to take out your last layer. You can see the difference that's made just from the first two layers being added and um, the contrast there. Um, as I said, uh, maybe copy the layer again for our next effect, um, which is going to be the dodge tool. Um, again, set it to an exposure um, pretty low, um, so it's going to be a subtle effect. Um, we'll also maybe make it to the highlights and make the brush slightly smaller if we can oh, that's it there. Um, and then what we're going to do is really try and bring out um, the nice yellow uh, even more of a contrast on the front of the temple so if you just click and drag over the, the yellow of the um, grass there that's really 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 burnt it out um, so we'll maybe just go back a little bit to there and we'll drop the exposure again again it's really kind of about feeling out the different effects you can can do here um, but you'll see how just dragging it across the highlighted areas um, is really bringing out the colors in the grass um, and we can if they're a bit bright and, and uh, you know a bit contrasty we can always drop those down later on um, and then we'll have a go at the uh, doorway of the temple really try and bring that out Okay, maybe even have a go around the sky to try and you know, bring out some of the highlights within that. You see that nice blue coming out within the sky when we drag the, the dodge tool over that. Maybe even drop the brush down and go over the sea a little, just to bring out a bit of that as well. Um, now, once you're kind of happy with where you are with, with that, if you go too far, um, you can always go back on a Mac. It's uh, Alt-Command-Z to um, jump back, or you can always just go up to edit undo um, or command Z jumps you forward to the latest change um, but once you're kind of happy happy enough with that then this is kind of where the trick comes in this is a, a little effect I kind of discovered with this and um, just from playing about but if I copy a layer this is something I use quite a lot and um, certainly for, for landscapes but if I copy the layer the top layer here that you see um, just in here and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it black and white so if you go to image adjustments, black and white, you'll see that brings up your options for that. That's actually quite a nice shot in and of itself um, because we've brought out the contrast in the grass and the, the entrance to the temple. Um, but what we're going to do is, I'm sort of happy enough with all the presets. You can drag these about and make them darker or lighter or wherever you want to go. I'm pretty much happy with where they're at. Um, so what I'm going to do is just click OK. And then go over to the, the blending options here, and um, this little layers um, area here. It'll be set to normal as standard um, for the, the layer that you have selected. And then what you do is you drop that down, and we're going to go down to soft light and select that. And you'll see there immediately the contrast has been brought out even more. There's more black, deeper blacks, and more of a contrast in the color. Um, I probably don't want to use it at 100%. So I mean, if you drop it down to zero, you'll see where it goes up to 100. Um, say we'll go for about 65 there, 65 percent. Again, play about with it yourselves. Um, once you're happy with that, what's the next move? Well, for me, the entrance to the temple and the grass are a little bit yellowy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the last colored layer here. And um, you'll see on the right hand side, and I'm going to go in to um, going to go into the color um, options here by doing command U and we're going to drop the saturation down a wee bit 
Um, you'll see here if you drop it, if you can go way up or you can go way down to almost nothing or anywhere in between. If we drop it maybe just down to uh, minus 15. Um, I'm going to leave the hue uh, where it is. You can of course play about with that, add in different effects, different little um, you know, colorations and things like that. But I'll leave it at minus 17, click OK. And then I'm also going to go in to the selective color. So if you go to image adjustments, selective color, you can go into the yellows. <clears throat> Again, I'm not too happy with the, the yellows are a wee bit uh, bold in this um, version. So I'm going to go into the yellows and start looking at the, the blacks. You see there as I move it around, it really changes the effect. I'm going to drop the blacks down there, um, down to about minus 30. I'm going to maybe change, yeah, I'm going to take out some of the, uh, actually, do you know what? I'm going to pop the yellows here up to about minus 3. Keep the magenta in. You can see there it's getting very greeny if I drop that. I'm going to keep the magenta maybe plus 5. and probably just leave the cyan where it is. Um, 0. Um, then what I'm going to do is click OK. And you can see already we're, we're kind of getting to where we wanted to go at the start. Um, we're bringing out the grass. There's nice contrast in here. It's not too greeny, not too yellowy. Um, what I want to do is maybe bring out some of the, the colors in the background here. So if you go to the marquee, uh, the, sorry, the lasso tool over here, uh, just select the normal lasso. Um, go up to the feather value and set it quite high. Maybe depends on the resolution of your camera. I'm going to set this to 120 pixels. Um, and then I'm just going to draw a selection around a portion of the sky that's going to be the main kind of focus area. Um, then what I'm going to do is go to um, Command U again. Maybe going to see how it looks with the saturation up. See that it gets very, very blue. And I just want to bring out some more of the blues and the purples. Um, so I'm going to up the saturation there by 25, 26%. Change the hue to be a little more purpley maybe. Um, say about there, plus 7, and click OK. And then you can go in again to maybe the selective colors um, and look through the cyans, um, you maybe change the, the darkness and things until it matches. You see what if you drop the black on that, it becomes very grainy here, um, which may be an effect you, you maybe like to see. Uh, I'm going to just keep it kind of a bit smoother for now. Um, maybe add in more of the cyan again, you see that coming out in the sky. Quite like that effect, gives it that nice thundery sort of look. Um, again, play about with these. Quite like that, the way it's sitting at the minute. And then if you do Command D, just to deselect. Um, we're getting there, you know, you see there's some contrast in. I haven't actually sharpened the image yet as well. So if we go uh, to the last colour layer, Go to filter. I normally use unsharp mask. So go to sharpen, unsharp mask. You'll see this is set to eighty-one percent. Um, just want to sharpen some of the details around the stone and whatnot. Um, at the moment, we'll go for ninety-one percent with a radius of one point eight pixels. Leave the threshold at zero and click OK. Then, if you zoom up, you can see it's it's slightly sharper. Um, around there. The other thing I did in this image um, in the original was to um, just to create a bit more depth in the image was to blur out some of the foreground grass here. Um, so again if we take our uh, we'll actually copy this layer and then we're going to select a rough area around here using our lasso. Again keep the feather value quite high so it's set at 120 pixels at the minute. You can see there it does that. And then if we go up to filter and to blur and then down to Gaussian blur and just select that and you'll see at the moment it's set to 8 pixel um, radius which is maybe a bit too much so I'm going to drop that down I think probably around there 4.7 uh, pixels is pretty good creates that blur effect gives the, um, the shot a bit more depth um, but it's not too much to the point where it looks really artificial um, and then if we deselect the selected area You'll see there the change if I go back and then forward. Just creates that extra little bit of depth in the image. Okay. Um, 
Now, again, I'm kind of looking at this thinking it's maybe a bit too saturated around the, the whole of the image. Um, you may very well be happy with, with this image as it is, um, and you like the saturation, which is you know 100%. Uh, again, play about with it and see where you want to want to take the image. Um, but in the original, it was very much more washed out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the last color area again, um, and then I'm going to go into Command U into the hue again. I'm going to drop this saturation down. So there's just a hint of all those colors coming through. Um, you can see there, I, th I just think that looks a wee bit better, a little bit more natural um, and more atmospheric. Um, now, another thing I can think of doing right now is to maybe go into the image and go to the curve settings and just see, again, we're, we're, we've selected this last colour layer. So what's happening here is the colour is coming up through the, um, the top layer, which is the black and white layer set to soft light. If you take that out, you can see there's not so much of a contrast. Add it back in, you get that nice deep um, black and, and contrast effect going on. But if we go to the last colour uh, effect and go to image and curves, and then again play about with this, you know, just I like to keep it in this um, this kind of uh, you know dot setting where you select it and then just drag, see where you want to go with the image. Um, I don't want to change it too much, but maybe just bring out some more of the highlights, contrast it a bit more. So I'm just selecting up in the tonal kind of range here, just dragging it up. See maybe too much there. Um, again, just play about with these settings. You know, dropping the the um, shadows down again here, or bringing them up. I like to see you know nice deep shadows. So we'll go for something like that. And that's pretty much kind of where we're we're at, you know, if you add in, we'll add in these other layers just from scratch and see where we had gone with it. You know, that to me was, was too much, the original shot. Um, probably just an evidence of me not being that experienced with the shot and how to work Photoshop. If you take it all the way back, that was the, almost the, I'm sorry, almost the original shot. And then this is where we've come with it. So strip it back to nothing. That's where we started. And that's where we've come to now. Um, and again, you'll feel free to add in different little effects. Maybe a, a diffuse glow effect might be quite nice. Um, depends how kind of ethereal you want the whole whole thing to appear. Nope. You know what the thing to do is I need to select um, need to select white whenever you do the diffuse glow for this type of effect. Um, let's switch these round so the white is on the bottom. Then go up to filter. Distort, Diffuse Glow. You can see there how that's affecting the, the grass. It's sort of taking a lot of the detail out. So normally you drop it way back, maybe even about there, just so that none of the clouds are burning out either. Um, we'll maybe add up a bit of graininess to it, just to give it a bit more uh, sort of atmosphere. Once you're set, you know, once you're happy with the layout and the setting there, just click OK. You see the difference there, the way the sky has been brought out. If we go back, you see the change, how the grass and the sky, the highlights there. Um, so whatever you prefer, you know, be, be open to playing about with different things. Um, but this just shows you how you can take an image from a single layer, um, which is pretty boring, um, and just build it up using different um, effects in Photoshop. Very, very basic effects as well. Nothing you need any technical expertise around. Um, but they just create something that's really quite atmospheric. Um, so hopefully that um, tutorial has been of help. As I said at the start, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be releasing this um, entire uh, Photoshop document for all members of the members area. And um, once that launches in uh, kind of probably late March time, uh, 2012. Um, so make sure you uh, get our in early register. Um, you can register throughout. Uh, there's any photo.com site um, there's a, a little subscribe form at the sidebar um, on most of the pages there's a pop-up that um, will come um, on your first visit to the site on the home page um, if you want to see that again to sign up just uh, clear your uh, history or your page cache um, and that will pop up after maybe 10 to 15 seconds and you just fill out your name and email and you will get instant access to 
this Photoshop document, but also a whole range of, of benefits going forward. We'll be giving away images every month, giving away PSDs that you can work on and you can um, you know, play about with yourselves, giving away advice and ongoing tutorials like this one, um, just to show you how we create the images we create and the effects that we create. So hopefully this has been of help, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, keep in touch and as I say, once we launch the, the giveaway of this Photoshop document, um, feel free to play about with it. We'd love to see what you do with it. Um, so email some, some examples back to us. Um, we'd, uh, we'd be really keen to see those. And uh, in the meantime, uh, have a good day. Cheers.